Okay, one, two, three, there's a doomsday coming. And I think that's just fine. I said a doomsday coming and we're gonna die. <laughs> but if read words on the internet, <laughs> it might make you think things that are dumb, but words on the internet always manage to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell the up ways from the down ways, but anyways, I think these days things are getting a little strange. You can't go oh back God. to the 90s, but you can go to Garbage Day Hour 9. In the room this hour, we have Lemon, Boots, Rain Gear, Bunny Bread, Isfahan, Jimmy Franks, JT. J.W. Friedman. And our artist for this hour is... Sanguinary Novel. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Wait, to end not, that as an up. Kumquat sounded not, like he couldn't believe what he was reading. Or is it? I was, I was kind of <laughs> waiting for this hour because I listened, I did that as a test. I, like, I did an hour nine test yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I heard that. I'm like, well, that's, that's an imperfect cadence. <laughs> <laughs> so it reminds me of playing Madden when they're like announcing players' names. Uh, so we got, number uh, three. So uh, yes, uh, this is in fact hour nine of, of Garbage Day. Uh, we've got a document given to us by Mix. It's uh, about survivalists and doomsday preppers. Uh, our artist uh, for the next two hours is Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> expressed uh through sanguinary novel and uh because we got to the five thousand dollar mark uh frank west is playing some dog shit so frank Yay. west is inserting this dog, dog shit, shit terrible EXE. game what wait, what you said you what was the game called the actual file that you clicked on to open this thing? the fucking title's wrong on the title screen <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So, so what's the game called? Actually, the game is called Time Ram Ramus Side Rams Time Ram and Stein. So you don't know what the real title is. So you can't. <laughs> I don't be think sure. the devs uh, know yeah, what the real title time, is. Yeah. Time yeah. Ramen Slide. We got Papyrus yeah. font. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Here we are. That's folks. not great. Okay, oh, cool. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna uh, let you hang out over there in the other corner. Don't shoot, the ball, nope. Don't shoot the ball, kid. Don't shoot the ball, kid. Sorry. I don't know why it's like this. She's got a reflective head, though. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're just going to dig into our uh, our document here. Uh, this was a document, as I say, given to us by Mix. Uh, and this is a document about uh, doomsday preppers. We're going to start things off um, on a website called tacticalintelligence.net. Okay, so uh, tacticalintelligence.net, as far as their survivalist website, I'm not saying this is a good looking website. I'm definitely not saying tacticalintelligence.net is a good looking website. I'm saying that for a survivalist site, it's fine. Um, uh, but, uh, but we're going to start things off here right on the home page. And I think Boots, uh, if you can uh, introduce us here to Tactical Intelligence. Sure. Great. About tacticalintelligence.net. Hi, readers. My name is Eric, and I am the creator of tacticalintelligence.net. I created okay. Tactical Intelligence, <laughs> the concept, <laughs> to, provide, <laughs> to provide the world with an open forum of knowledge relating to emergency preparedness, personal security, modern and, whoa, a pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> modern and primitive those. means of modern survival. Pop -up. <laughs> modern and primitive means of survival and self-reliance. Even though I've had extensive training in these subjects, I am still very much a student, and it is my hope that we can learn much from each other. Based on the obvious condition of the economy here in the U.S., as well as throughout the world, and right. what the world's decision makers are doing to combat these economic issues, the potential for serious disruptions to our standard of living has risen dramatically. With That's one of the weirdest scare quotes I've ever seen. What, is, yeah. what are the quotes around combat doing there? They're actually letting it happen because they want <laughs> society to right, collapse. Is that because otherwise we'd think that you were literally like punching the economic issues in the yeah. face? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we call those not, metaphor marks. It's not literal combat, Lemon. Come on. <laughs> with this in mind, I hope that some of what I will be sharing with this site will be of benefit to those who may be facing hard times. Most of all, the more knowledge you have, the more prepared you will be. The more prepared you are, the less you'll fear. And then a Henry oh, David Thoreau God. quote. <laughs> Transcendentalism is very much in line with uh, survivalist thinking. <laughs> so is living in your friend's backyard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so uh, in tactical intelligence dot uh, net, which is not the only site, we're going to be on a couple other sites, but uh, tactical intelligence dot net uh, is a site uh, with a bunch of articles, a bunch of helpful articles. And uh, Isfahan, hey, uh, just take a moment and look at what's happening on Frank's stream. <laughs> This is like okay. It's imagine somebody like, no. just like oh no, that's some jailhouse sex right now. <laughs> imagine somebody just like dropping, like wandering into this stream, and it'll it'll look borderline experimental. I think but there's there's no safe period to, to just drop into garbage day. Like you go like oh I have a hang of this. This yeah. makes total sense. I've... Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I share this event with friends, and like every year, they're they're like like how'd it go? It's like oh really good. They're like yeah, I tuned in, but I I don't I don't know. <laughs> you didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> you anyway, did you tell them? Know. Did you tell them in all seriousness? Like neither did we. <laughs> anyway, uh, Isfahan, uh, what uh, yeah. what should we do when authority comes a knocking? <laughs> well. Uh... Uh, here's what you should do when uh, authority comes knocking. My name is somehow also Erich. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I don't need to be worrying about that. I'm a law-abiding citizen, just minding my own business, you think. Right. Keep thinking that. I remember when Isfahad gave me Werther's Originals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ATF the the remembers. The Nazis ate. <laughs> <laughs> Call me old-fashioned, but I still trust the government. <laughs> <laughs> right. Keep thinking that. Every day, every one of us breaks several laws and never even knows it. There are over 100,000 laws, federal, state, and local, on the books. Do you know them all? I doubt it, considering not even cops and lawyers know them all. The only reason we are all not in jail is because of selective enforcement of the laws. Remember, driving one day and passing five cops and none of them pull you over, then the sixth one does for a broken taillight. Selective enforcement based on the cops' mood at the time. The thing is, authority knows that we do not know all the laws of what our rights are, and authority uses it against us. Oh, fantastic. Authority knows what people like us, survivalists, preppers, off-gridders, homesteaders, whatever you want to call yourself, tend to do things a little, in quotes, quote marks, differently. Smelly and we tend to what? be a little outspoken, and authority knows that, given a chance, they will find something to use against us. So it is our job to deny them that chance. So oh, what to do? by yelling, am I being detained a bunch? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was merely traveling. <laughs> uh, so here's the subsection. What authority wants to happen? Authority okay. knocks on your door. And you open it smiling, police officer, animal control, what have you. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> this is starting to feel like real. <laughs> yeah, waves a paper in front of you and says... I'm Officer Snatch, and this is Officer Grab. You're in violation of Triple X law. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! And, you, oh, and yeah. you look back over your shoulder at the sex party in the living room, and you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> uh, and they're waving a paper again. and said, and we are here to take it. You, a private citizen, says, oh, you caught me. Come on I mean, in and take whatever you want. It's fine. I don't want to give you any sort of like reading notes or anything, but I believe that line is actually, I'm Officer Snatch, and this is Officer <laughs> Crab. You're in violation of Triple X law. Okay. <laughs> I am Officer Snatch, and this is Officer Crab. You are in violation of Triple X law. What a sexy werewolf. Yes. <laughs> and we're also here to fix your cable. And we are here to take it. <laughs> take it. Take it. Uh, anyway, you are so private shit. So that's what uh, the authority wants to happen. Uh, what, yeah. what, what should we do? Well, here's what you should do when authority comes. <laughs> when authority comes. There's a knock at the door. Private citizen does not open the door. Mm -hmm. Calls through the door. Who is it? The reply. I am police officer. Animal control. Deputy Sheriff Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> First of his name. Still a sexy cop. He's just... <laughs> mm -hmm. Private citizen again through the door should reply, please go away unless you have a warrant. Please get off my property. 
Now, in a perfect world, that should do it. But, of course, we do not live in a perfect world. Authority is going to get mad at this point because you did not immediately bow to their wishes. They're going to make threats. Do not respond. And never, no matter what authority says, open your door. Keep silent. Do not answer any questions. Just politely say, I refuse to answer any questions without my lawyer present or without a warrant. If they claim to have a warrant, tell them to slip it under the door. If they really had a warrant, the door would be gone by now and you would already be in handcuffs. <laughs> this, is, this is some white people talk here. <laughs> yeah, was, this is really good tips if you're pale and frail. <laughs> and if you're on this website, you probably are. Uh, okay, so uh, that was what to do when authority comes, which is terrific. Uh, uh, so the also yeah. says, I come shot at the sheriff, but I didn't come shoot the deputy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god oh there's a fedora in the bob ross painting i'm excited <laughs> starting early <laughs> all right uh so uh so now that we've uh we've uh uh out uh, out thought uh the authorities uh let's make some acorn flour so oh, jt nice. JT, I want to make some acorn flour. You think you can help me out with that? Oh, I absolutely can help you with that. Okay, fantastic. Let's get ready to make some acorn flour. Uh, so, uh, turning those bitter-tasting nuts that are found all over the place during the fall into something that is not only palatable, but rather good-tasting is not as difficult as one would think. Okay. In this post, I'll be demonstrating how to turn acorns into an awesome food source. Mm -hmm. Step one. Okay. Gather the acorns. Mmm. Mm. As, as you may. Yes, this, uh, this first step is rather self-explanatory, uh, but for the sake of being thorough, I will go through it anyway. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> while you can collect them directly from the tree, the best place to gather acorns is right under the tree when they fall. Oh, oh so, so not above the tree. All right, got it. Right, yes. Under this would take forever, though, right? Or just steal them from a fucking squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Just stick up a squirrel. And Fuck just... that squirrel. Hey, can, we, uh, can we take a quick moment? I want to ask Frank a question. Okay, that sounds good. Let's drag him uh, out of uh, jail. Hey, uh, hey, Frank. Frank, I got a question. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the deal with that boy uh, standing next to the flaming garbage can there? It's a little girl, and she's going. She's a demon, and she's going to kill us all. Or so said a guard very quietly okay. um, at the start. She got Frank a West, did you fuck that head. guard? <laughs> and this is ten minutes. Before... Whoa, there's. Yeah, I can't tell. It, like this surely hair. can't be intentional. The hair, but it... no, no, it's, that's a yamaka. Don't worry about it. Yeah, she's like a medieval friar or something. <laughs> yeah, she's tonsured. She's so I don't know if you noticed, but I got out of bounds within the first thirty seconds and fell for about a minute till the game decided I should just go to the next. Frank West O O B new world oh, record incoming. Beat it then. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Um, also, I noticed like there was there was a point where there was just like a. We we like we all looked over at the stream and there was just like a close up of a face doing some very sexy motions. Yes, I think that was the guard, probably. Okay. The guard that had like a perfectly symmetrical line yeah. down his you face. You did fuck that guard yeah. though, right? Yeah, it looked like you were. Fucking him. I mean, he was a course by the time I got to him, so obviously, yes, I did. <laughs> okay, thanks, Frank. Back to prison. Thank you. Oh. This, game, this game is the only entry on the Twitter feed. Can you fuck the guard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Freddy Krueger is on the screen. Yay! <laughs> I think Freddy Krueger is fighting Illuminati. <laughs> well, why All wouldn't right. he be? All right. Uh, uh, JT, I want to pulverize the nut meat, okay? <laughs> okay. Yes. Let me, let me tell you I've been waiting for this step. Pulverize the nut meat. We're gonna we're gonna pulverize that nut meat. Uh, so uh, uh, I believe we skipped over a step. You got to shell the acorns too before you pulverize the nut meat. But we'll just get right into the the important bit, which is you cool. know, well, uh, duh. Yeah, beating beating up that nut meat. So let's get right to that. <laughs> um, so step three. Uh, now that you have all the nut meat out of the shells, you'll want to grind <laughs> down as fine as possible. The old way is uh, to use a big flat rock as your surface, which acts as a mortar. And then you have a, a smaller round rock used to crush and grind the nut into a fine consistency. Uh, Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, since I like to train in the old way, but still use technology when possible, I like to use uh, my Green Star juicer or a food processor for this. Uh, the, nuts, <laughs> the nuts are softer than peanuts and will not damage these appliances. Cool. Um, so, uh, so there's a there's a so uh, another. I should, I should juice my nuts. 
<laughs> I already pushed that button. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, another, uh, article, uh, just called how to eat cat, cat tail. Um, and, uh, you know, you could summarize it by just eat cat tail. Um, uh-huh. but, uh, JT, there is a, uh, a recipe, uh, in that article of, uh, how to make cat tail acorn bread. Uh, how to make that recipe? Cattail acorn bread, and that's mm-hmm. within the how to eat cattail. Nah, I just paste it into the Discord there. Oh, okay, okay. Let me uh, find that. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, uh, cattail acorn bread. One of my favorite recipes is cattail slash acorn bread. Mm. The cattail flour mm. combined with the acorn flour from the how to make acorn flour article make a tasty combination with a typical bread recipe. Uh, so should I read out uh, the individual parts of the recipe here? or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be great, yes. Okay, Otherwise, so how will people know how to make it? Oh, yeah, yeah. true enough, true enough. Okay, so you got... to uh, uh, place this uh, picture of uh, cat tail acorn ooh, bread into the stream so that you can all see it. It looks delicious. All right, I'm just... <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Oh, God. That's, it looks like the loaf is fighting it now. Like, like, That's the loaf they use to punish prisoners. <laughs> yeah. get some nice Somebody loaf. put a rock in a steam table. Uh, <laughs> Kanye Sutra has pointed out that it looks like poo poo. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Well deserved. <laughs> okay, so here's how we uh, we make that uh, delicious little morsel we got there. We get uh, half cup of water, uh, one cup milk, uh, mm-hmm. two tablespoons unsalted butter or vegetable oil. All right, you're making bread so far. Yep, so far so good. Uh, one and a half teaspoons salt. Two tablespoons sugar. Yep. Two cups <laughs> wheat flour. One cup acorn flour. Uh, one cup cattail flour. And two and a quarter teaspoon dry yeast. So, so in this like post-apocalyptic future where society's <laughs> completely broken down, we still have we we have to make our bread from acorns and cattails, but we still have milk, butter, and vegetable oil. We also, <laughs> oh, I, I read ahead. It's better. Dry yeast. Still active dry yeast. Just yeah. just just make bread and then just put some other shit that you found in your yard into the bread. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to make the bread pictured below, I used the above ingredients what? and threw it in a bread machine. <laughs> okay. So we got electricity too. That's good. <laughs> Did you put I like the beef in your bread. I like to train the old fashioned way with a bread machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we uh, we take that bread machine, we set it to basic bread mode, and voila, three hours later, I had some great taste in cattail slash acorn bread. In a survival slash primitive situation, it's a simple matter of taking the dough and throwing it on Putting some it into a bread bones. machine. <laughs> no. Putting it in a bread machine. As your forefathers did. Yeah, it, and it's, uh, it is surprisingly tasty. It's. Like it requires having all of the ingredients for bread. <laughs> yeah, but then fucking it up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And a fucking machine because apparently kneading dough is something that you're just not gonna be able to do in a post apocalypse tomorrow. Hey, you're really tired from gathering all those acorns at that point. <laughs> kneading is a bit much. You had to you had to point your crossbow at so many squirrels. Yeah. Yeah, I got my post apocalyptic uh, fourteen hours of Overwatch to play. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of squirrel mugging going on. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, there's a couple uh, bonus articles uh, in tactical intelligence, uh, such as uh, how to make human newer recycling human waste, uh, the one prepper resource you can't be without, how to develop mental toughness, and condom water bottle. <laughs> oh, 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 no. You don't want to get your those, water bottle pregnant, stupid. Those are the triple X crimes that you were arrested for earlier. <laughs> um... Uh, okay, so, uh, but we're going to be moving into uh, a really cheery uh, ooh, and brightly colored uh, website called uh, doomandbloom.net. <laughs> doomandbloom.net is uh, survival medicine. Uh, oh, I thought it was uh, developing uh, Unity games in the post-apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bunny Brett, I'm just going to point you over to the uh, document here. Uh, we're going to jump around just a tiny... No, we're all right. All right. Uh, but yeah, if you'll take, go to the document and go to uh, the survival antibiotics section, please. Survival antibiotics section? Uh, uh, no, survival, survival antibiotics. Okay. And... Sh- 
Actually, somebody else is going to have to do that because I got to go. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, by which. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> by Bunny Bread, I meant to say J.W. Friedman. Survival. Yeah, that's right. It sounds alike. alike. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, same, same difference. Um, hang on. I'll try to do the voice. Um, there you go. Yep. Cool. Survival antibiotics. We were at the recent USA Prepares event in Missouri, and many of the questions that we fielded during our time there related to the stockpiling of medicines and what each medicine was useful for in times of trouble, period. Mm. There isn't a 60-second answer to this. Actually, there isn't a 60-minute answer to this. But anyone that's interested in preserving the health of their loved ones in a collapse will have to learn what antibiotics will work in a particular situation. It's important to start off by saying that you will not want to indiscriminately use antibiotics for every minor ailment that comes along. In a collapse, the medic is also a quartermaster of sorts. You will want to wisely dispense that limited and, yes, precious supply of life-saving drugs. Having said this, not having antibiotics in your storage will resort in a grid-down scenario. In the ah, unnecessary, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah that, that thing we all tread. <laughs> in the unnecessary deaths of members of your groups to infections incurred from activities of daily survival. An infected cut from chopping wood, for example, may travel to the circulation, causing a life-threatening condition known as septicemia or sepsis. In the History Channel series, <laughs> after Armageddon... <laughs> This was the cause of death of an EMT due to the lack of antibiotics in the community medical storage. So you're so you're telling survivalists about how to stockpile antibiotics, but you decide to start by explaining why antibiotics are good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you don't want to assume they're anything like, when you're. You know that they're like people. good and like you know like resisting infection. Like they're actually kind of life saving in certain situations. <clears throat> uh, well. If you'll allow me to continue, I'd like oh. to explain why liberal use of antibiotics is bad. <laughs> why liberal use yeah, of antibiotics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your whistle is your whistle is finally tuned. I got it. <laughs> wee, wee, wee. Liberal <clears throat> use of antibiotics is a poor strategy for a few reasons. Overuse can foster the spread of resistant bacteria. Antibiotics routinely given to turkeys recently caused a resistant strain of salmonella that put over 100 people in the hospital. 36 million birds were destroyed. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh. Potential allergic reactions may occur that could lead to anaphylactic shock. See my recent article on this topic. You bet. Making a diagnosis may be more difficult if you give antibiotics before you're sure what medical problem you're actually dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Antibiotics, well, whatever. Uh, just to say, take amoxicillin. Who gives a shit? <laughs> You can see that judicious use of antibiotics under your close supervision is necessary to fully utilize their benefits. Discourage your group members from using these drugs without first consulting you. Remember, you are in charge of making these sometimes difficult decisions to parcel out your limited me medical supplies. Yeah, use. so what antibiotics should I get? There are many antibiotics, but what antibiotics acceptable to the average person would be good addition to your medical storage? Each antibiotic what? belongs to its own family and is useful for different ailments. <laughs> Thanks for asking that question, Rainbow Dash. You're welcome. It's you want just me to suck this... your dick? <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> no, no please. Just oh, like this. That's okay. You don't. It's no problem. I'll oh, just go oh. ahead. No, just sit back, back down. It's, it's all right. uh, if you'll oh, excuse me. Mind. I'm busy putting on my costume robe I'm and a little bit of surgical mask right now. <laughs> <laughs> just retract Do you want me to read the antibiotics or can I stop? <laughs> uh, no, that's fine because I have a question for uh, I, Jimmy Franks. I, I would yeah. like to give an Before... honorable mention to uh, the fact that Fish Mox makes an appearance in this list. Oh, oh good. good. When you, Which when you some of you may mox? remember from the knife episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um uh jimmy franks yeah quick question for you mm -hmm. just three simple words that's all i want to know just three simple yep. words okay are you normal <laughs> ah second best ned's atomic dustbin album <laughs> <laughs> bold bold, hey, bold and brave preppers from time to time like whenever yeah! anyone in my family visits i have to answer questions put before me regarding our decision to be prepared things like um, what is all this stuff? And what the heck do you think you're going to do with these things? And Some are you going to even... show up for Christmas or do you think you can give this one a miss? <laughs> Some people aren't even polite enough to ask a question and will just make a blanket statement like this isn't normal. This got me to thinking, 
Am I normal? <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the evidence. No. <laughs> If I'm not doing what the rest of the herd is doing, does that make me worthy of suspicion? Is living on my end of the preparedness bell curve antisocial or somehow dangerous to society? It didn't even take you four words to change the definition of your question. Am I normal? <laughs> I'm, but does that make me suspicion? Is that, that's what we're talking about here, right? <laughs> does my bunker and stockpile of guns make me dangerous to society? <laughs> Let's talk about normal. Definition of normal can be biological, chemical, or even geometric. It means perpendicular, <laughs> but generally it's thought to be the standard or average. Normal is also defined in psychological terms, meaning sane or conforming to the conventions of one's group. And this is what I'm interested in talking about today. By continuing to avoid your own topic. Great. Yep. Uh, preparedness and not being part of the herd. If we're talking about the average person, we're talking about someone with maybe three days worth of meals in the pantry. This is conforming to the conventions of one's group. But is it sane? For us uh, species that's supposed to value self-preservation, it seems anything but a normal person expects their world to be untouched by the various scenarios that could cause a collapse situation. They believe this despite the knowledge that society is a complex machine with many gears and widgets. The malfunction of any of these could disrupt the fragile matrix of civilization, yet it is normal to ignore this fact and go on our merry way. Maybe I'm the only sane one and everyone else is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Do these I've gears and widgets never thought this? <laughs> Do the gears and widgets include a bread machine? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to per persevere in times of trouble? Then it's only normal to prepare. It certainly is from the standpoint of sanity, and if we can make preparedness the standard, we might have an entire nation that will do well in hard times. Imagine that. A catastrophe occurs and we keep on going. What could be more normal than that? <laughs> this is Dr. Bones signing off. Hey, are you an accredited doctor, Dr. Bones? Uh, Where did yes. you get your license? I got it from Toys R Us. <laughs> Dr. Bones, aka Tony can't Hawk. Prove it doesn't exist. <laughs> He's got a PhD in tinning. <laughs> oh, uh, there's a there's a fantastic section coming up in just a sec, but I just want to draw everyone's attention over to the visuals of the stream. Yeah. Good shit. Oh yeah, it's my good. God. Good stuff. Oh wow. <laughs> I was optimistic about how this was going to go, but god damn. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, I've got an announcement to make. Oh, what would I you got like an to announcement to make? <laughs> you got an announcement to make. Um, so, Hang on, uh, let me put down my pischetti. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to make an offer uh, for the the first person that can donate seventy five dollars. Uh, will get uh, their very own theme song, uh, written, recorded, performed by me, of similar quality to the theme songs that we've heard so far in this marathon and are yet to hear. So take that into account. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've been, I've been in contact with you boots over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and your process of building uh, all of these, uh, that's not right. You should probably reset that. Cause it's, it says it's already made. Oh wait, no, never mind. No, it doesn't. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, so, so I've been in contact with you uh, about this, uh, this songwriting process. And so having just finished 24 theme songs, your thought process right now is, I think I should make another one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Listen, I've got, okay. I've got practice, and there are still more VST files that I've downloaded and not tried yet. <laughs> <laughs> so many presets. Yeah, I've got, like, my, my plugins folder is absurd. He's got a MIDI sequencer. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, I, and also, like, i got to make use out of this, uh, this Akai MPK MIDI uh, synthesizer and drum machine that I purchased that has a, a really, really... Uh, nice uh arpeggiator uh preset feature to it yeah i heard uh, the swing algorithm in that is really sweet you uh, know yeah. Whoop, and already <laughs> gone great uh <laughs> deep 13 claimed by deep 13 deep theme, you're, you're gonna get a theme song sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh you're gonna want to how would they how should uh, deep 13 contact you boots uh deep 13 i probably have your email address from the donation okay uh if not send me an email at boots at thefpl.us all right great uh and we will uh take that off of the stream because holy shit uh let's give away another couple hundred of those wait, oh boy wait oh, is it sherman tank also did it? Did oh, looks like sherman tank got it as well okay let's see how many people how many donations of it. 
<laughs> yeah, let's take it off screen now. Yeah, let's take, the- <laughs> <laughs> take that I'll, phantom off. I'll honor both of those. Whoops. Oh, jeez. Whoops. I'm, yep. Uh, great. Uh, anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. We were looking at uh, garlic as an antibiotic. Uh, JT. <laughs> yes. JT, uh, these antibiotics, J- Jay was just talking about them. They sounded great. Uh, I've got garlic. I think that's the same thing. Garlic is an antibiotic? Let's let's just take all those pills we just got, those those fish pills. We can just throw those in the garbage because we got sure. something way better than that. We got garlic. Yeah. I just like to put I just like to put things that smell in my body. That's all that matters. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right. So uh, in a collapse situation, it stands to reason that we may find ourselves without pharmaceutical medications. Pharmaceutical manufacture is a complex process involving a lot of chemicals. Just okay, doctor. doctor expert. Uh, Dr. Bones. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I was about to just say, just see Dr. Bones' articles on how to make penicillin or the formula for insulin if you don't believe me. Fucking told you. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> uh, so therefore, certain medical issues which had relied upon these drugs will require some form of natural treatment. Garlic is an amazing natural medicine. It is known to be antibacterial, antifungal, and an immune stimulant. Uh, garlic remedies, at least the best ones, use fresh, crushed, organic cloves. Used in a tea or mixed with raw, unprocessed honey, garlic has been associated with lowering blood pressure and cholesterol, and even regulating blood sugar levels. Okay. Uh, bacteria exposed to garlic remedies have been proven not to produce resistant strains. Antibiotic-resistant organisms are becoming more and more prevalent, due to big agribusiness indiscriminately using over 80% of antibiotics used today. For newer so not models, only can you make antibiotics out of garlic, but like garlic is the best antibiotic. Like it just is, is, is absolutely the, the best antibiotic that exists. Yes. That is, that is what I've been saying this entire time. It is the <laughs> best. Uh, so for newer mild infections, it may be a better choice to try a natural remedy. Uh, garlic nature's miracle herb in a collapse situation. Garlic I think versatile. I read read that on a Dr. Bronner's soap bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all one. All one. <laughs> Use only two cosmetics and garlic for everything. Uh, I'm going to point out that we, there was a third donation for $75, so I'll give you a theme song, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, wow. Jamie? Yeah. Jamie, Sherman Tank, and Deep 13. Three themes. How exciting. <laughs> For internal bacterial or fungal infections or for respiratory congestion to decrease tissue inflammation, use a garlic tea or a honey garlic syrup. For prevention or treatment of external wound infections, use cool compresses of garlic tea without the lemon juice or honey garlic syrup or garlic oil in place of a triple antibiotic to cover the wound or laceration with sterile gauze or dressing after applying the syrup or oil. Change the covering and reapply the garlic syrup or oil once or twice daily. Then eat that gauze. (laughs) <laughs> ask your doctor if garlic is right for you uh so vaginal yeast infections may be cured by oh god uh use now this really is dr bronner shit. there we go there we go single peeled clove of garlic wrapped in a gauze and placed inside of the vagina for whoa. eight to twelve hours whoa I don't think you should do that. <laughs> Opa! <laughs> <laughs> remove, remove the gauze and garlic. Okay. Look at the segue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Sanguinary Novel crashed before the game did. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so much happening in that gift now. Yeah, uh, I think I was I was looking at this. Godzilla is one of my favorite gifts in here. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, so once you've you've kept that in there for a good yeah, solid eight garlic, to yep. hours, yep. Then yep. you. Um, uh, remove the gauze and garlic, and then you place a new. Does that gauze be part of a dry rub scenario, or <laughs> <laughs> you know, just let it marinate in there for a while? You know, yeah, just, just yeah, <laughs> really just get the flavor, uh, you know, extracted. 
Uh, you want to repeat this for two days. Vaginal itching can be treated with either a moist, cool compress uh, with lavender and or tea tree essential oil added, uh, mm -hmm. or by sitting in a shallow, warm bath of water with a few drops of the same essential oils for 15 minutes. Or uh, just fuck it. Yeah, shove just more garlic up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep shoving garlic in there until it's fixed. Well, so that old sailing, when all you have is garlic, every problem looks like a vagina. <laughs> 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 ear infections uh have been cured with a slice of fresh garlic clove wrapped in gauze and placed just in just just take a whole bunch of garlic and gauze and just jam it in every hole in your body it's it's totally fine it's, totally why not. it's natural it's part it comes from the earth yeah uh cover the ear with a cotton ball and secure gently with a piece of paper tape change the garlic and gauze every six to eight hours until the earache is gone here's how to make Garlic tea recipe. Number one, four cups of, 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 of uh, filtered boiled water and allowed to cool slightly. Uh, okay. Number two, add four to five cloves of finely chopped or crushed organic garlic. I don't know why we needed to even point that out. That's pretty obvious, I think. Uh, three, add fresh lemon juice and or raw unprocessed honey to taste. And uh, drink three to four cups of that daily, either warm or cold, but do not reboil the solution. It will stop the healing properties. Mm-hmm. Honey garlic syrup recipe, uh, crush one half to one clove garlic and place on a tablespoon, pour raw unprocessed honey onto the spoon and ingest the spoonful of honey garlic syrup every four to six hours as needed. Yeah, but like ew, like ew, right? <laughs> yeah, the, no, it's delicious. both the garlic tea and the sounds vile. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I like honey. I do really like garlic, but God damn, that sounds disgusting. Two great tastes that go great <laughs> together. Just... This is reminding me of Soylent recipes. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Natural remedies. Yes. Will... Oh, what? <laughs> okay. Wild kumquat appears. Yeah. Uh, natural remedies. Hello. Will... Oh God. Uh, natural remedies will have to take up the slack if modern medical care and drugs are not available. Learn how to use garlic and other natural substances. You can grow them yourself, and they'll be another weapon in your medical arsenal if times get tough. Uh, signed, Nurse Amy. Oh, thanks, Nurse Amy. Thanks, Nurse Amy. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch streams for just a second here because it looks like uh, looks like Frank West picked up a new gun. Uh, so let's bring him in here. Hey, Frank. Uh, hey. What's going on? Looks like you're making progress in this uh, uh, really cool looking game. Uh, so I did find out there's a chat box. Sometimes it's all black. I like when it's all black because I mm -hmm. can't see it anymore. I found a chat box. Okay. Is there anyone and... to chat to? Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we thought you meant in the in the game. Oh, hi, Frank. Oh, hi, Frank. <laughs> oh, it's Discord. My beloved chat box. <laughs> and there was a really big lava spider boss that d didn't attack and didn't move, so I just left it and walked away. <laughs> uh, when you kill enemies, do they just vanish entirely? Is that what is happening? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. Frank West walks the path of peace. And I. I have two. I have two weapons. I have the pistol, and I have the explosive crossbow that kills me. Am I, am I consistently like seeing through walls and in, in sections, or? I mean, there's a lot of like models kind of that like, don't quite cover. It's kind of an overbloom. I do feel like I'm seeing the sky come through the ceiling yeah. a lot, but that like could the, be the joints at the, where the ceiling meets the wall. Yeah. I, I mean, there's just a lot of really bad lighting. Is the thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's hard to know when that's the sky or when that's atmospheric. just... As, yes, as, a, uh, as a fancy, fancy computer player, do you have any idea how many frames per second you're getting? Because it looks like maybe one, maybe one or two. Uh, I've, <laughs> I'm going to say, like, I'm going to say this is probably running 144 hertz, right? It feels so yeah. responsive <laughs> and good. Yeah. Also, I noticed when you when you fire the gun, the uh, the vapor trails from the bullets. So it must be oh. really humid in there. Oh, this is fun, actually. Um, forget vapor, vapor trails from the bullets seem to be coming from your navel area. Forget vapor trails. <laughs> Literally everything bleeds in this game. So, <laughs> now, now, last year, the game that you played, we determined that the, the player character's name was Thick <laughs> Maybe that's just part of the character. character. <laughs> Does this character have a name? Uh, this character's name is Mr. I'm a... I mean, are we sure it's not Thick Dave? No, it's I first did... person. <laughs> I wonder what's casting all of these shadows. Shoot more walls. Shoot more walls. <laughs> I, want... 
<laughs> the whole world is made out of impossible burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here's a confusional experience for you, real close up. Oh, <laughs> yes. I'm ready to go just, to Carl's Jr. Now. <laughs> he, just, he just vanishes. He just poof. He's gone. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Frank, I'm going to have to send you back to jail because we got a couple recipes to read. Understandable. <laughs> uh, here you go, back into prison and uh, switch these streams back because uh, it's time for some some recipes. Yes. Um, we got some uh, survival recipes, and I think we're going to start off with the most delicious food ever conceived. I'm talking about homemade Twinkies. Like, like better than oh, that yeah. bread we made earlier? <laughs> oh, no. oh, there's a picture. Um, oh, there's, there's, there's a picture. Horrific. Yeah, because yeah, be, uh, no, I mean, what, what will we do when the apocalypse comes and Twinkies no longer, no longer right, exist? Right, exactly. So uh, uh, I think Jay, Jay, do you think you could take these uh, homemade Twinkies, please? You mean me, Jay, or JT, Jay? Oh, uh, let's give it to JT for a sec. Okay, so we've got a we got a picture here of a, of a homemade Twinkie. I would say put that in the stream, but I think it might be not safe for work. Yeah, <laughs> <It> looks, <laughs> mom, I, mom, I'm I on fucked it. a cornbread. Oh, oh, okay, I was gonna take. Go ahead. Basically, this thing it looks like somebody like shot a load into a hunk of. This does not look like a Twinkie at all. Absolutely. This is what happens when you pulverize the nut meat. Um. <laughs> Do you see what happens, Johnny? This is what happens, Larry. <laughs> uh, Chad is clamoring to see the Twinkie. I think you got to yeah, show yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Let's see, let's get that if, in there. If y'all are watching this at work, shame on you. <laughs> I just, I just beat the game by accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, that's what you donated for, I guess. Frank yeah, West, you may I, I have, have a another, world record. I'm gonna, that was short. I thought that game would be longer. I have another backup game that should take me at least another hour. So You may I, have the world record for this game, Frank West. I, I might. I don't think anybody else realized you can just walk past the lava spider. What's what's <laughs> what's weird is that like I I watched a uh I watched like a bit like like a uh, a let's play of it like yesterday. It was three hours long, and none of what I saw in that is what I saw in yours. Well, I'm wondering because again I do have to emphasize this game was in early access and considered so bad it's good, and then they re-released it as this. And I'm wondering if they took out more content. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, anyway, I'm uh... going to boot up another game called Amok, which has been my backup game for two years. Okay. It is A M O K in all caps, and I know nothing else about it. Uh, awesome. Keep keep that till next hour. Uh, oh, okay, right. I'll wait. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to hear about these Twinkies, please. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's let's learn how to make these delicious, nutritious, uh, homemade Twinkies for your uh, apocalyptic survival situation. You're gonna need a lot of Twinkies, so uh, so here's our ingredients. Um, uh, so there's the cake, which is uh, one cup sifted whole wheat flour, one cup Makes white sense. flour. Yeah. Um, you know, basically cake. We've got yeah, pretty much just the stuff you would need for cake. Uh, okay. And then there's the, the filling, which is a uh, quarter cup. Quarter cup powdered shortening, uh, one cup powdered sugar, one tablespoon, one teaspoon vanilla. That's important, huh. uh, and two tablespoons of water. Huh. I. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Where's where's I mean... where's the cum come in? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think? That's that's what those three asterisks are. <laughs> oh, you can have some substitutions in this recipe, uh, Mr. J. W. Friedman. Yes, sir. Uh, the apocalypse has happened, and uh, you know I would be bummed out about that. I would be bummed out about that, except for I know how to make my own cool ranch Doritos. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is extreme to the max. You can see where people's priorities are here. Will you uh, walk through the recipe of how to make your own post-apocalyptic Cool Ranch Doritos? Sure. So uh, <laughs> ingredients, homemade corn chips. This part is boring. It tells you how to make chips. Who cares? Seasoning yep. mix. Half packet ranch dressing mix, of course. <laughs> Quarter packet cheese powder from a box of white cheddar mac and cheese. Got My favorite um, naturally occurring source of food. Half teaspoon garlic salt, half teaspoon salt, one tablespoon, or sorry, teaspoon of onion powder, and a pinch of paprika. Mm. Other sunflower oil preferred here for its light flavor and tolerance for high heat. Soybean oil would also work. Cast sun iron sunflower oil goes bad real fast. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine, it, though. It does, but, you know, it's got a high smoke point, so, you know. Okay, cast, cool, cool, cool. Uh, cast iron tortilla press, wax paper, and most importantly, a gallon-sized Ziploc bag. <laughs> you're going to make a fuck ton of cool ranch Doritos. 
to. <laughs> Instructions. All right. The, the apocalypse has happened. All I can do is play D and D. Mmm, instructions. Mix together corn tortilla dough using clean hands to mix. Using your hands will help to be able to tell if the dough is too wet or too dry. Working with small to medium dough balls, press dough in between two sheets of wax paper using a tortilla press. After initial press, use a rolling pin to press the dough as thin as possible. It still needs to be able to transfer to the skillet in one piece, so be mindful of that. But the thinner you can press the dough, the crispier your chips will be. Carefully remove the tortilla from the wax paper. We hit 5,500. Woo! 5,500. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. All right. Carefully remove the tortilla from the wax paper. I found it's paper that was on the bottom first. This part's getting pretty old. After removing tortilla dough from the wax paper, place onto a very hot skillet and allow to cook for 10 seconds or so, watching carefully so that it doesn't burn. Flip over and cook 10 to 15 seconds on the other side. Where's the fucking Cool Ranch? Once all the (laughs) tortillas are cooked and somewhat cooled, brush each one with oil and stack one on top of the other until a reasonable number of tortillas have been stacked. Use a knife with a small dish as a template to cut off the ragged edges of the tortilla. Next, use a larger knife to divide the tortilla is into desired size chips and lay like a Looney Tunes cartoon bit. now. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Once the chips are cooled a bit, spray with oil and place in Ziploc bag along with two to three tablespoons teaspoons of seasoning powder. Shake to coat the chips with seasoning, adding more if wanted, and you will, and enjoy. <laughs> Bake 10 to 15 minutes, watching carefully. Spray with oil or very lightly with water and shake to coat with seasoning powder. Didn't we? All right, whatever. Ready to serve. Enjoy! What do you mean <laughs> serve? Who the fuck serves Doritos? <laughs> well, I've uh, invited you here today uh, for this very important business meeting. Uh, in the center of the conference table, you will see a decanter of brandy and my homemade Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> oh, you have to try his homemade Cool Ranch Doritos. They are the best. Uh, I learned the recipe uh, in the Serengeti. <laughs> uh, one of my many safaris. Wasn't it so embarrassing when you went to Burning Man and somebody brought boxed Cool Ranch Doritos? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's another uh, there's another recipe, uh, which is a Mexican tortilla lasagna. Um, because if you're making lasagna, um, why wouldn't you use uh, like crushed tomatoes, a jar of chunky salsa, uh, two cans of uh, canned turkey, uh, some mm-hmm. sliced olives, uh, garlic powder, um, cilantro seasoning, and then ma- and then you're gonna do some masa flour. Make your own tortillas um, and make lasagna out of that. <laughs> New York City. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, F plus, did we learn anything from this uh, experience? I sure as fuck did. Yeah, oh, you yeah. did. Hi, right. welcome back. Hey. What happened? Nothing? <laughs> nope. Um, we learned, game. We oh, learned how to make God. this is a first for we, everything. We learned how to make Twinkies out of semen. Hey. Yep. Yep. Learned. We, you should have known that already, buddy. You're an adult. We learned some medical tricks with vaginas and 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 garlic that they don't want you to know about. Really? Yeah. <laughs> which gets inserted into why which? They don't want you to know about that though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, there was a, uh, section that was long, uh, <laughs> that I skipped over, but it was about, uh, homeopathy and preparedness. Um, uh, <laughs> let's talk a bit about what homeopathy is and what it is not and how it can help your family. Yeah. Uh, it's a 200 year old system and that means it's good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, that is, uh, hour nine. Um, we will be coming back in the 10th hour. Uh, I know I'm back as well as, oh shit. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Rap yeah. pads next. Yeah. <laughs> Rap yeah. pads Don't next. spoil it now. I'm fucking stoked. As- yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to stick around for that. So the uh, the Rap Pad uh, 2019 document compiled by Lemon and Boots, uh, hosted by Bunny Bread. Uh, your guests are Boots, Lemon, Jimmy Franks, John Toast, Adam Bozarth, J.W. Friedman, uh, and Sanguinary Novel uh, back on the streams, uh, bringing some fat rap action. God damn it. Uh, also, <laughs> uh, you need to come to... Uh, thfpl.us at some point in the future because we will have this painting 
uh, available to you in some way, shape, or form. Hopefully, maybe, hopefully. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go for a break. Uh, go ahead, get up, stretch your legs, walk around. Uh, right. We got a we got a ways to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 